Last day of deer season. This is it. So I was going through some past deer hunts, some old videos and old photos the other day, and I came across a hunt that was back in 2015. It was a muzzleloader hunt. We changed our deer hunting week that year. So the week that we go to, to camp for the week deer hunting, we changed it from Thanksgiving week to muzzleloader week. Uh, we kind of adjusted it according to the weather pattern. I think we're, they were calling for, it was gonna be, Thanksgiving week was gonna be a little warmer. Didn't look like there was gonna be any snow. Muzzleloader week, they were calling for snow. It was gonna consistently be snow all week long. Uh, so last minute we decided to switch, switch weeks. So we were hunting at a particular spot pretty heavily that had been successful in the past. And it just, it just wasn't working out for one, for one reason or another. So it was the last day of Maine deer season, December 5th, and a muzzleloader uh, week up in Northern Maine. And we decided to make a last minute call. We went into a different area that we'd seen some buck sign pretty consistently earlier in the year. I uh, hadn't really hunted it at all. So we basically called an audible uh, on the way in hunting that morning and said, you know what, we're gonna travel into this spot. It was a pretty good poke from, from where we'd been hunting all week long. So yeah, we like, yeah, we're gonna go in there and, and this is our last chance, last morning right now. So we get into this spot and the first spot that we wanted to check, there was several sets of deer tracks crossing the road. So we pull over and there was a decent track going in there, some smaller ones. Bail out of the truck, head down into the woods and start tracking this deer. This deer was looking for some does. Kept checking tracks, checking tracks, and uh, made several rubs. Saw a lot of deer sign in this one little spot. And I just felt, you kind of had that feeling that, man, there's a lot of deer in the vicinity right here. Maybe this will work out pretty good. Uh, if we can just have a little bit of luck on our side. So after he meandered down and around amongst these deer for a little while, his whole demeanor changed and basically was making a beeline uh, right out of the area. And so we continue on them and I, we didn't go too far, probably 15 minutes. Pretty soon we come to buck track walking right back on his track. And at first you're like, man, that looks just like his track coming backwards on. And it's almost like you second guess yourself sometimes. And you're like, no, that, that, that can't be him. So we went, I don't know, maybe 50 yards just to kind of verify. And so it was definitely his track coming back on his, his previous track. You know, we just turned around and, and started following that. And uh, it was funny, it was starting to warm up. Dad, funny enough, Dad was overdressed that day. He had on some heavyweight thermal underwear. Uh, we went just a little ways and I was like, I gotta shed some clothing. He was getting pretty pretty heated up. So we spent a few minutes, you know, sitting there. He uh, took off his thermal weight underwear and, and uh, got himself put back together. And I, we probably spent five or 10 minutes doing that. And then, geez, we just went a little bit further and across this ravine over on another knoll, uh, there was a buck in the doe and the buck was standing there looking back at us and, uh, you know, made a decent shot and, and dropped it right there. So you know what? Enough jabbing. Here's a short video of our 2015 muzzleloader hunt, last day of Maine muzzleloader season and my first muzzleloader buck. Do my pellets. Didn't I give them to you? I'm quite sure I gave them to you, Paul. This is... Uh... Muzzle loading season. What is it, December 5th, Paul? We found some fresh tracks and we followed them in. And what do you say, Paul? Maybe two hours we've been on the trail? No, it's 11 o'clock. Longer than that then, probably three or four hours. So we haven't even <laughs> got up to the deer yet. We're gonna walk up right now. So Paul, lead the way, old boy. It looked like a two and a half year old buck. That is a dandy, Paul. Yeah. That is a dandy. This is December 5th. It's, uh, what is it? You say about 11.30, Paul? Quarter after. We've been tracking this deer since probably 7.30 or so this morning. Cut the track going across the logging road. Number of tracks. Last day of deer season. This is it. Oh, that was a loader too with that. Yeah. 
Nice big neck on Nice, there. nice buck. Yes. Nice buck. So. Yeah, it was one of those situations where we just made a last second uh, call to go into a spot that we hadn't really hunted at all that year. We knew there was some deer in there. So yeah, we just switched it up and you know, last day of the year, can't give up, keep going. And uh, you never know what will happen. And you know, sometimes it, a lot of it's timing, you know, we happen to be in the right place at the right time. And sometimes you think, you know, if it was, wasn't for maybe dad taking a minute or two to take off his thermal underwear, uh, things probably would have worked, could have worked out differently. Uh, so it's little things like that, that, you know, sometimes get the timing just right and caught up to those deer in just the right spot. And they were just across an old and, uh, yeah, it was a, just a chip shot and, and dropped it right there. So you just never know what's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, that was a pretty, that was a pretty neat hunt last day, last day of the year. Uh, and my first year with a muzzle loader. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, that was a pretty memorable hunt. We were pretty excited and it was kind of a hunt that I forgot we had footage of it. Uh, you know, dad was always carrying a camera years ago, over the past years, uh, my father's always had a camera going and sometimes it was annoying and be like, Oh my God, you got that stinking camera out again. You know what I'm grateful for now? We have a lot of footage that we can kind of go over and, and kind of relive those memories. Now the tables have kind of turned. I'm the one with the camera in his face all the time. And he's probably sitting there thinking, would you shut that freaking camera off? Can we do one thing without a camera going? So yeah, that was a good hunt. And I just, I wanted to share that, you know, just kind of show that, Hey, you know, stay in it till the end. You know, and sometimes things are circumstantial. If it wasn't for dad having to change his thermal underwear, uh, we may have never been presented with an opportunity to, to harvest that buck. It may have been a different time and, and he, we may have caught him in a different area and blown the whole situation. So uh, sometimes circumstances work out in your favor and sometimes they don't. Things are warming up. Spring is, I think, finally here in Northern Maine. Uh, pretty much all the snow has gone. Another couple weeks and the ice will be out and we'll be doing some open water fishing. So I'm looking forward to that. Plan on doing a lot of that this spring and, and uh, into early summer. So, so until next time, get outside. It's good for the soul. See ya.